Few cars in Formula One history made such an immediate impact and been such a long-lasting talking point as the famous Brabham fan car that won on its debut at the Swedish Grand Prix in 1978. The first Alfa Romeo engine Brabham, the Brabham BT45 was an overweight and bulky car, initially weighing 625 kilograms and as wide as was permitted under the F1 technical regulations. This was due to the difficulties of packaging the large, powerful Alfa flat 12 engine and the fuel it required to complete a race distance. After lengthy development, it became competitive, but never won a race. In mid-1977, Brabham designer Gordon Murray started work on the ambitious design of the BT46. It was intended to compensate for the weight of the engine and fuel and allow the Brabham team to take a large technical step forward as well as to improve safety. The car featured several radical design elements, one of which was the use of flat panel heat exchangers on the bodywork of the car to replace conventional water and oil radiators. It was removed before the car's race debut, never to be seen again. The BT46 debuted at the third race of the 1978 season, the South African Grand Prix on March 4, March 4, 1978, with the revised nose-mounted radiators. The cars were immediately competitive, although reliability was suspect. The rivals, Lotus, had introduced the concept of ground effect to the Formula One World Championship in 1977 with their fast, but not always reliable, Type 78. Peter Wright and Colin Chapman had discovered that by carefully shaping the underside of the car, they could accelerate the air passing under the car, thereby reducing the air pressure under the car relative to that over it and pushing the tires down harder onto the track. In response, Brabham designer Gordon Murray developed the B variant of the BT46, also known as the fan car, was introduced at the 1978 Swedish Grand Prix as a counter to the dominant ground effect Lotus 79. The BT46B generated an immense amount of downforce by means of a fan, claimed to be for increased cooling, but which also extracted air from beneath the car. The car only raced once in this configuration in the Formula One World Championship when Niki Lauda won the 1978 Swedish Grand Prix at Anderstorp. Brabham drivers Niki Lauda and John Watson were under strict instructions not to reveal just how strong the fan car was. That included being warned about how much they revved the engine in the pits given it visibly sucked the car to the ground. The fan was not driven by its own motor, instead, through a complicated system that connected the fan to the lower shaft of the gearbox and incorporated no less than four clutches, it was powered by the Alfa Romeo engine. That meant around 30 brake horsepower went to the fan rather than to the wheels. But that was an acceptable trade-off because the downforce and corner speed gain were worth significantly more lap time. The fan components themselves originally came from a tank. Originally plastic, then glass fiber reinforced nylon, these had to be beefed up significantly with magnesium blades ca cast. As Gordon Murray explains in the excellent book, One Formula, 50 years of car design, the hub of the fan was also reproduced at the last minute in solid aluminium following another catastrophic failure. While the fan was obviously to create downforce by sucking air from the underfloor, which was sealed by the side skirts, this could not be its primary purpose according to the rules. That's because of the way the regulations were worded. In a change for 1978, the rule banning movable aerodynamic devices included a caveat. This stated that movable aerodynamic devices were permitted if their primary purpose was not aerodynamic. So there were two effects of the fan on the Brabham. One was to help to suck the car to the ground, but the other was to increase the efficiency of the water radiator mounted horizontally on the top of the Alfa Romeo engine. To satisfy the regulations, all Brabham needed to do was show that more than 50% of the effect was cooling. Measurements obtained when the CSI visited Brabham's headquarters established that more than 55% of the power of the fan was for cooling. Although obviously, Brabham's primary motivation for introducing the fan was aerodynamic, Part of the genius of the car was producing it in a way that satisfied this regulation through the way it impacted the cooling. As expected, five teams launched protests even before the race started in Sweden, Williams, McLaren, Lotus, Tyrrell and Surtees. The Brabham BT46B was only Gordon Murray's first attempt at a fan car. It was effectively a cut and shut job adapting the existing BT46 to make the most of the concept. But Murray was already working on a bespoke fan car, the Brabham BT47. That car never raced, in fact it was never built, given the rule changes that outlawed such designs for 1979. The BT46B fan car still holds a mythical status in F1 to this day, owing to the what-if scenarios that could have unfolded had Brabham continued to use the car. It also remains the only F1 entrant with a 100% win record.